um, third tutorial on how to use the blend tool um, and this tutorial is more advanced and it's just going to show you how to create an interesting um, abstract ethereal pattern in the style of um, Andy Gilmore and I've got an example here of his work so um, if you haven't watched the other tutorials you may need to go back and have a look at them um, just to get to grips with some of the basics but I will go over some of them as well so the first thing that you need to do is that you need to create three circles um, with different strokes and if I just move in you can see a bit clearer so three circles and they need to be ideally equally spaced um, if I open my transform palette I can see show you how big the circles are so Mine are about 71 and a half millimetres or 7.1 centimetres. Um, and then you need another one, a smaller one. It doesn't really matter what colour the stroke is on that one, as long as there's no fills on any of them. Um, and this one is approximately half the size of the other um, circles that you have created. So this one's 35.9 millimetres. Um, and it doesn't matter too much, you don't have to be exactly right. The first thing that you're going to do then is select all three of your um, circles that you've created um, and then we're just going to blend them together using the blend tool by um, clicking on the centre of each um, circle with the actual blend tool. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is we are just going to select our blended circles and our smaller circle go into object, blend, replace spine so that we then now have the circles circulating around our central circle. Um, as you can see at the minute it doesn't look quite right so we need to make a few small changes. The first thing I'm going to do is actually I'm just going to change um, the blending options so if you double click on your blend tool um, change them to specified steps and then I'm going to type in a number of steps. I'm going to go quite low because I want to be able to see what's going on. So I think maybe something like 35 is a good place to start. At the moment, I've got my stroke set to one point as well, although I will be changing that in a minute. The next thing that you need to do is select your white arrow. You're then going to click on the two circles that are um, next to each other where you can see it hasn't quite finished off the circular shape. If you can't find them, you need to make sure that you've got your smart guides on. Um, that should be in view smart guides. Uh, and then equally, if you still can't find them, just go into command Y and you can see a bit clearer where the path is. So you need to select both of those by holding down shift and selecting them with the white arrow uh, and command Y to get back again. And you'll see that what we need to now do, this is the tricky part, is just blend, make the blend between the last two, um, the, uh, these two points, sorry, so that that then completes the circle and makes it lovely and neatly blended. So click on your blend tool, and you might want to zoom in for this to make sure that you're doing it properly. Click on your blend tool, click on the first one, click on the second one and that will now close the gap and you'll have a lovely um, circular shape there and you can see that actually some of the lines on here aren't entirely um, accurate they're not exactly the same but it doesn't matter too much about that for now um, the next thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to work with this and I'm just going to double check um, and pull one of these out so I can show you what's going on so you can see that I've added on an opacity um, mask to this circle or donut shape in order to give it that blended feel over here to the right hand side um, and that slightly transparent feel because we want to give it that um, look against the background. So what I've done is I've just created a gradient, I'm just going to bring mine over a minute. So you need to create a square shape that just covers over your circle, like so. Ignore the fact that mine's a rounded rectangle, it doesn't matter. You can just create a normal rectangle. I'm going to do that here now quickly for you. Click to rectangle and draw this out. Um, and then, let me just fill that with a normal colour and then I'll re 
change that to the gradient so you can see what I'm doing. Um, you'll then obviously need to have your gradient palette open. Mine is just simply a linear gradient that I've edited. So if you click on the grey, the black and white linear gradient, and then what we need to do is make sure that we've got more white area on the left hand side and more of the gradient on the other side. So what we do literally is we just grab that slider in the middle and we move it like so and as it moves you can see that um, the slider goes along and then also we'll need to drag out the white so that we duplicate that white square so that we've got more white happening within the gradient. And to do that you just hold down Alt, click on and drag and it will drag out another white section for you, like so, and then you can drag that slider back in a little bit until you've got approximately halfway um, on your gradient, so that we can see that half is white and half is black. Let's just delete that for now a minute. The next thing that you're going to do is you're actually going to select your gradient square on the top and your shape underneath. In fact, actually, before we do that, we're just going to change the um, stroke weight because we can't do it once we've added the opacity mask. So at the minute it's on 1, but we want it to be really delicate. So I'm going to take it down to 0 0.25 and you can see that that has quite a big impact on the actual shape and it just means that it becomes softer and a little bit lighter and more delicate. Put your um, gradient square over the top, select them both, and then you need to go to your transparency um, palette which should be in window transparency so open that up you then want to click on the little arrow in the corner there to the drop down menu and press make opacity mask and you can see that what's happened is that where although it's very light to see on this one where the actual um, black was now becomes the blended area and where it was white that became that stays the same. And the next thing that you're going to do is literally just um, put your um, copy out your shape and then set up your seam. So you can see here that I've got my shape on there and I'm just literally going to drag it out. And we're all the time drawing inspiration from this Andy Gilmore piece. And obviously this is a learning exercise, it's not meant to be for you to plagiarise his style of work, just to help you learn how to use some of the techniques. I'm not even sure he did use this technique, so if he didn't, that's cool. Um, drag out by holding the Alt button and holding down Shift so that your um, circle remains in the same place. And you'll see that obviously this isn't quite right, so I'm just going to nudge it down using the arrow keys until it's in the right place and what I want to do here is I don't want this area where it's fading away to be here I actually want it to be below so I'm actually going to select that and turn that so that it's actually in the place that I want it to be like that um, the next thing that I'm going to do is select those two again and this time I'm going to copy and paste on top, so command C, command F to paste on top and then I'm going to swing them round like this so that I've got them in the right place and as I'm getting to the sort of the right place I'm going to hold down shift and that will make sure that it becomes parallel. So we now have our um, second set of shapes and again I don't want um, I want to fiddle around with where I want this more faded edge so I'm going to just position them and turn them so that I've got the faded edge coming in in the same place. Um, this one I'm happy with. This one I possibly might turn around a little bit as well. And you can see that we then have our ethereal shape developing. Now obviously this is not exactly the same because on Andy Gilmore's version he's missing his pieces here and they're blended in much um, 
better that you almost get this continuous shape but I actually quite like the effect here of the overlapped edges so I'm going to leave that like that for now um, and I think that that's quite a nice little lesson to learn um, if you wanted to go in and edit this you could obviously remove more of the sections you could add you could play with your um, opacity mask which you can see here you could play with that uh, and come up with different ways of doing it so that you can have different areas um, shaded out etc and you could also take um, your circle into Photoshop and remove parts of it with the brush tool and duplicate it and put it together in Photoshop if you wanted to do that but for now I'm going to keep this as my example just as a quick little go for you to have a play around with this and create some abstract shapes and hopefully you'll go off and have another play with it and see what else you can do with the function. Hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please point others to the direction of um, this tutorial. Thank you very much.